At a press conference this morning, the Ontario government announced $2.6 million to connect Indigenous communities to more mental health and addiction support. Here's the story. My name is uh, Corey Mikas. I'm the executive director of KO. I'm also a, a member of Deer Lake First Nation. It's a community in northwestern Ontario. And uh, I gathered here today to celebrate, I guess you can say, for the announcement of Ontario connecting indigenous, indigenous communities to more mental health supports. We at Kiwetno Gumakanak, we originally provided mental health supports to six of our member First Nations, which is uh, McDowell Lake, Poplar Hill, North Spear Lake, Deer Lake, Fort Severn, and Kiwewin. Those are the six communities we we work for for uh, for our tribal council, and uh, as we continued and provided strong mental health supports to our communities, we uh, we undertook this uh, this Nan Hope this Nan Hope initiative during the times of COVID. We we continued to provide mental health supports to other communities allowing the isolated communities access to mental health through our uh, virtual services or through our uh, through our uh, e-health our e-health department provides te telehealth as we called it before but now it's like more virtual as times change as time change the meaning that as technology changes technology becomes more advanced we provide uh, health care to our member First Nations. So with saying that, I would like to invite the ministers up over here to say a few words. Minister, Associate Minister Michael Tobolo, did I say that right? And Greg Wickford. Well, good morning, everybody, and um, we're hopeful the weather improves a little bit as Minister Tobolo and I will hopefully make our way up to Iyabmatung uh, for an arranged visit and, and work through the challenges and hopefully create some opportunities for that community in the wake of the destruction of their uh, school. Um, that community, like many others, are... are important to our government, but personally, having lived and worked in most of them, especially in the Yabmatung and many of the communities in, uh, in the KO mem membership, um, we're here to provide uh, support. So I'll start off by saying Ane, bonjour, Greg Rickford, Indigenous Cause. Thank you for joining us here uh, at the Victoria Inn in Thunder Bay. Michael joined us on short notice as we've been busy over the past couple of weeks uh, trying to understand how, through various ministries, we could provide some meaningful support uh, going back and forth. I actually had a chance to sit down and, and chat with, uh, with Alvin in Winnipeg uh, late last week um, and uh, talking with the folks at, uh, at KO that we, um, uh, we could... Um, provide some solutions and some support, especially in the context of, uh, uh, of some of the crises that have occurred. We recognize that mental health, mental health, and having access to safe and effective services close to home, so in the communities, and when children are down here for various reasons, youth, uh, particularly for school that provided provide support for them. It was just a little over a year ago, I want to say, uh, that uh, Michael joined me in my riding in Kenora, working with the Kenora Chiefs Advisory Youth Camp, which we proudly supported to expand services for at-risk youth in the farther reaching corners of northwestern uh, Ontario. Uh, and we've had the opportunity to implement some mental health programs that are proving to be very effective in Pekanjikum. So in keeping with that targeted commitment uh, for the communities and for Anishinaabeaski Nation and Kiwetnuk Okimakanak, 
Um, uh, I want to invite my, my colleague and dear friend, uh, Minister Tobolo, uh, to, uh, to make some important announcements. Thank you, Michael. Thank you, uh, Minister, and um, good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure for me to be here this morning, and uh, as you can see, I'm not appropriately dressed for the trip that we have planned later, but I do plan to change uh, at some point. Um, it really is a pleasure for me to be here this morning, and I want to thank Minister Rickford for inviting me to come up for this very important announcement. Over my years in government, I've seen firsthand what the mental health and addictions crisis have done to Indigenous communities across the province, particularly in the North. I've spoken to the parents of children lost to suicide and to the children of absent parents lost to the terrible cycle of addiction. I've been to communities still reeling from loss who have welcomed me without fail, graciously and with respect, even though they had every reason in the world to be upset. It'll always be my goal to return that respect by listening and engaging and by behaving like a partner, which is something I believe is extremely important for this government, our government. For decades and even centuries at this point, to, to this point in time, successive governments at every level have ignored the concerns of Indigenous communities when it comes to mental health and addictions issues. Premier Ford, Minister Rickford, and I are absolutely determined to change that and to ensure that progress is made in developing plans and strategies together with Indigenous communities so that we will make a difference. And that's why we're here today. I'm proud to announce that our government will be providing over $2.6 million in funding to the Anishinaabe ASCII Nation to help address the urgent mental health and addictions needs across their communities. The funding includes a million dollars to KO for the NAN HOPE program, which provides community-based mental health and addiction supports to members of all NAN communities. It also includes $263,000 for mental health supports in First Nations schools in Thunder Bay and Sioux Lookout in response to the recommendations of the Seven Youth Inquest. I'm sorry, it was $623,000. $500,000 for NAN crisis response teams through the Indigenous Healing and Wellness Strategy and a further $500,000 for NAN to purchase vehicles for those teams to make sure they can better connect remote communities to care. In November, Grand Chief Fiddler and I spoke at the Indigenous Services Conference in Toronto where he asked me to work collaboratively with the NAN communities to discuss potential solutions to the problems that we face. I hope that, we, that he and NAN leadership see this emergency funding that our government and our trip later this afternoon demonstrate the way that Minister Rickford and I do from the standpoint of how we see our collaboration. This is not an end as the, uh, of support for, the, for, for, for NAN or for the First Nations, but it's a beginning of a renewed dialogue and a demonstration of our commitment to get this right. We didn't come to this table empty-handed, and our solutions won't be empty platitudes and endless discussions. We know that what is required is action, and we're taking action because the status quo is unacceptable to absolutely everyone. For as long as Minister Rickford and I are in Cabinet, we will fight to ensure that more supports are available in northern communities and that more Indigenous people across the North can connect to the care they need closer to home because we know that that is how problems are resolved, not by shipping people to other parts of the province. In the near future, I hope to be able to share more about the projects we're working on across Northern Ontario to help Indigenous people connect to mental health and addictions, the care that they need that's designed and implemented by and for their communities. Until then, I want to make clear our government's total commitment to providing care that is culturally appropriate and based on generations of Indigenous healing knowledge. We're continuing to make investments like this across the province of Ontario through the Roadmap to Wellness to rebuild and modernize a mental health and addiction system. But we can't do it and we won't do it without Indigenous voices included. Today's announcements and discussions are a step, I believe, in the right direction. 
we know there is more that needs to be done. And Minister Rickford and I are keenly seized of the issues that need to be addressed and are working along with our Premier and at the Cabinet table to ensure that the issues are addressed. And I'm eager to get to work to make NAN communities and all communities across the province of Ontario happier and healthier communities. Thank you. Jimmy Witts, Minister Tabillo, for all your words. As uh, Ed mentioned, it's culturally appropriate and with the month of the challenges that we face in uh, Northern Ontario, that's, uh, it'll, be, it'll be a big help with, with all, within all our First Nations in enhancing our services that we provide to the communities. As, as everyone had been, may have been aware that we recently undertook NAN Hope at the KO level, which, which uh, we are still continuing to do, we're still continuing to build, and this will certainly help build our, our team making our team stronger. So at this time, I would like to invite Roxanne Perkins. She's our e-health director. Thank you, Corey. Um, good morning, everyone. Um, Buju, Anin, my name is Roxanne Perkins. Mom, I'm here to shed some light on the history of KO telemedicine. Um, my predecessor, Orpa McKenzie, um, started the telemedicine program over 22 years ago um, with the direction from the KO chiefs. The chiefs of our tribal council wanted more accessible mental health services in the north. This need for mental health services is what sparked the beginning of telemedicine in the north. Today we have over 50 telemedicine sites across Ontario, um, as far north as Fort Severn First Nation and as south as Caldwell. <coughs> Mental health needs resurfaced during the pandemic um, as a critical need for our communities during the pandemic and we needed hope. NAN Hope has been there for Indigenous peoples across the NAN territory for over the last three years. Today, we need instrumental access to in-person and virtual mental health services across the NAN ter territory. This need is vital for in-person and virtual care. Um, Chimigwich for this help today, and we look forward to continued long-term support from Minister Rickford and Minister Tavolo. Thank you very much. Chimigwich, Roxanne. So our next speaker, we'd like to introduce uh, Armanda Parkinson. She's our health director for Kiwadnawu Makanek. Okay. Hello, everybody. And just as Corey said, Armanda Parkinson, health director for KO. Um, I'd just like to acknowledge the, the ministers for being here today. Um, I'm honored to be a representative of Kuwait Natoko Kamakanik as well as Nan Hope. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of insight. We have taken over the surge funding since October, August 2023 this year. Um, the funds were actually approved just before Christmas, about two weeks before our break, and since December 18th. Uh, to the current date, I'll kind of go over some of the um, crises we were addressing. So we had four, four substance use poisonings resulting in one death, seven unexpected deaths in the communities, four unex unexpected deaths that resulted in um, police investigation or an investigation, uh, six suicides, all under the age of 30 uh, and as young as 12, 12 or three, uh, confirmed homicide, three missing persons, 
one motor vehicle accident involving nine people injured, uh, one of them had perished, uh, one house fire resulting in a death as well. So Nan Hope has uh, served 12 communities uh, in the last two months and we've serviced 17 sites of sending resources uh, that's either in person, uh, you know, people on the ground or it's also supplies as well. Um, so the idea of our response is always community first, so our first level of response is the community-based workers, uh, anyone who's residing in the community to support, and our second level of response is our tribal councils, our third level of response is, is NAN HOPE, um, also different uh, organizations such as SLIFNA um, as well as health authorities. So one of the things that um, you know, comes from this is we want to ensure that we're establishing uh, community resources. So if they have communities, uh, pop-up crisis groups, we want to be able to support that. We do understand that the crisis response uh, needs to be addressed in the communities. The community-based workers need training. Uh, and again, with, with the money that we receive, uh, it is for community engagement. It is for those resources. It's also for uh, training. Um, you know, supplies that are desperately needed to the communities. So the mental health and addictions pandemic that is happening in our communities is not going to go away as, as quickly as we at all like. There are tons of core issues that need to be addressed, such as infrastructure, housing, um, you know, accommodations for any of our allied professionals that come in to support the communities. And, uh, and of course, you know, having unsafe drinking water for the majority of our communities. So this is, uh, you know, almost what we do here is, is uh, we're responding to um, or being reactive to uh, crisis as, of, as opposed to being proactive. But this is just kind of what we're faced with today. Um, so that's kind of the update. We will continue to support uh, the NAN communities. KO is very dedicated to providing the services that are so desperately needed. Thank you. Miigwech, Armanda. So that uh, was staying there with uh, Armanda and Roxanne's Roxanne's presentations or their remarks like this will this will improve the services that we are able to provide to to the First Nations on the, on the recent challenges that we undertook as Kiwana Wogumakanak. It was a it was a vision by our by our chiefs of our communities and with the with the encouragement of them that we we were able to undertake this challenge and uh, in meeting the needs of our people and also meeting the needs of the Nishinaabe Nation, which includes 49 other First Nations. So with, with regards that, uh, I mean, Grand Chief Alvin Fiddler was unable to make it here today. He had prior prior commitments and he's traveling up north. That's, that's, that's what we mean by challenges, of the meeting the needs or the challenges of our First Nations. One of them includes weather. That's uh, is uh, in order to get to our First Nations, you have to fly up there. That's the biggest challenge these days. So with, with saying that, uh, I'd like to thank everybody and also the ministers for this opportunity. We will, we greatly appreciate it, and we will put it to good use. Miigwech. News Ledger from Thunder Bay. We are working hard to bring you the news and the information that you need to know for Thunder Bay, Western Ontario, and Northern Ontario. If you like what you're seeing, take a few moments, like the video, share the video, and subscribe to the channel.